Hello and welcome. It's the chat. I am Manny. My guest is someone who saw tomorrow. He's an intellectual icon, an accomplished public servant, and uh, the 18th Inspector General of Police. Solomon Ehigeto Arase, the 18th Inspector General of Police, is a lawyer and principal partner of the Solomon Arase and Associates Law Firm. He is also the CEO and General Manager of Solar Security and Consult Abuja. Born in June 1956, Solomon is of Edo descent and hails from a Redo local government area of Edo State. He was raised in Sapele town but educated in other parts of Nigeria. He studied at the Amadu Bello University, Zaria, where he obtained a bachelor's degree in political science. He also attended the University of Benin, Nigerian Law School Abuja, Lagos State University, and Ambrose Ali University, where he obtained his LLB, BL, LLM, and PhD degrees. Solomon is also an alumnus of the National Defense College Abuja and the University of Ibadan. He joined the Nigeria Police Force in 1981 upon graduation from the Amadu Bello University, Zaria. He was a Commissioner of Police, Assistant Inspector General of the Police Intelligence Bureau, Deputy Inspector General of Police Investigations Department, among other roles. While serving in the force, he was instrumental in the development of an anti-robbery and anti-kidnapping operational protocol to address high-level crimes in Akwaibom State. He also worked in collaboration with the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime to establish a drug case tracking and analysis unit. He was also part of the Nigeria Police Contingent to the United Nations Mission in Namibia in 2015. Solomon was appointed as the Inspector General of Nigeria Police Force by former President Goodluck Jonathan. He served as Inspector General for 13 months until his retirement in 2016. Since after his retirement, Solomon has been the principal partner at the Solomon Arase and Associates Law Firm while also working as a facilitator and guest lecturer at the National Defense College. Solomon has contributed to various local and international publications and has also participated in several workshops and professional engagements around the world. He was noted for his service to the Nigeria Police Force and conferred with the National Police Medal in 2013, among many other awards and recommendations. Solomon Ehigeto Arase is married and blessed with children. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to have you here. Well, it's good to know that you had left the police force. I should have been saying so. <laughs> How does it feel? Um, I'm content. And I have found myself in my, com is my this, comfort zone. Is this from your heart? Yes, it's from my heart. Do you think you have you know, contributed enough to, you know, to retire from the police force looking like this? And... Um, <laughs> I wish, you know, every policeman looked like you. I did my best while I was there. 35 years is, in a man's life is a long time. And uh, I was able to develop pathways for policing in the country. And uh, whenever I look back, uh, there's a sense of uh, fulfillment that I had the opportunity to leave those uh, landmarks, legacies, uh, that uh, has remained imperishable. There are not too many people in the police force that I remember or know of is that as articulate as you are. <laughs> I think it had to do with my background. I am from, um, my mother was a school teacher. And uh, you, you know those old school teachers, how they used to breathe down on the necks of uh, their children. She wanted me to actually take after her. She wanted me to be a teacher too because her younger brother ended up being a professor of library science. And uh, so she wanted me to take... Where was your father in all of this? Oh, my, my father was um, a polymer scientist. They were the first set of people who set up the Michelin in Nigeria. So, you know, he was trained in France. So the, my, the background I had, you know, 
was that that I didn't qualify you or perhaps <laughs> uh, you know arise yes. uh, for you to be in the police. That, you should have well, been somewhere well, else. Well, that 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 is what uh, that is what my mother taught and my parents they taught. But you know, time and chance happens to us all. What was your impression of the police before you joined it? I hadn't any deep knowledge about the police before I joined. But I, I, I had friends who had uncles who were in the police force, um, like uh, late Gani Udaudu. Gani Udaudu died as, an, as, a, as a deputy inspector general of police. He was an in-law to M.K. M. K. Smith, the present you know, police service commissioner. And our paths crossed very early while I was doing my youth service. So he was always very passionate about, look, no, the police that you see, uh, you know, the officer Keda is quite different from, you know, the street managers that you come across who you think they, you know, they are giving the force uh, that negative, you know, perception of, you know, a, a bad cop. Now that you have left the yes, police, yes. do you hold the same impression? What impression? Well, I mean, the negative perception. The police no, 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 no. You see, uh, every organization have, you know, they, 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 they have issues that they contend with. Um, the, the police force, that is why I was so passionate when I became an IG, that those, you know, street managers, the inspectors are in rank and file. If you touch them profoundly, you teach them and say, these are the things you expect from them. They are very good people, you know. So it's, it's about care, it's about welfare, it's about motivation. How are you able to motivate the workforce? How are you able to sway them away from, you know, uh, those negative perceptions that they have? And there are some certain small, small things that you can do. Like, you know, I was allergic to roadblocks. That was how I introduced the safer highways, because I said, you know, uh, contemporary policing does not require you blocking the highway. It's not a good uh, crime uh, prevention strategy. You can do that when you have intelligence that something is, has happened and you want to lock down the, the highway for a period of time to look for what you are looking for, but not putting logs on the highway. Did you introduce too much intelligence in the police that oh, uh, well, people probably you know think otherwise of you that is that is my area that was my area of you know interest because i felt that if the police was going to regain their mandates you know of the being the lead agency in internal security management then they must have sufficient intelligence you know to be able to do that and Throughout my period, the 13 months I spent, I ensured that the technical platform of the police was, you know, the first class. My establishment of the intelligence response unit became, you know, uh, something that could now use that intelligence to deal with operational issues that they are having. How would you summarize 13 months as IG? It was amazing. I, I was in a hurry. I knew I had no time. And after being a principal staff officer to three inspector generals of police for five years, I, I, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew the gaps I wanted to fill. So it was, it, I had a vision and I had a mission. I already, you know, penciled down those things I wanted. And that was why every day to me was as if it was my last day. And uh, I was able to go around the 36 states of the Federation, and including the city of Abuja, in that period of time, trying to touch base with them, encourage them, let, them, let me talk to them, let me feel them, let me tell them that I can't sit at the comfort of, you know, Louis Edel House and start dishing out, in, in, you know, instructions to them. I, want to, I, wanted to, I wanted to touch them. I wanted to see those areas where I could quickly, you know, make some Did you succeed in doing that? Oh, yes, I did. I did. There's this uh, SARS, you know, and its brutality. Yeah. How did you cope with that? Why SARS, did that SARS brutality during my period was, you know, any, I, I think I had two cases of, you know, extrajudicial killing. And I was very, very firm about that. Life is sacrosanct. If you cannot give life, you cannot take it. So... Uh, you so what did you do to change that? I, by the time I charged the two of them, dismissed them and charged the two of them to court, 
they knew I was serious as I was. Then I started a retraining program. I started rebranding them and change, making sure that when you see them, you don't see them as if they are touts. They, you know, they should be properly kitted. I no, think but, they, but that's the result of it. Yes, yes. The appearance of any size yes. puts fear no, into... No, it should, it, 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 should, it, should, it should be... It should put fear into the minds of the criminals and not law-abiding citizens. You know, they started deviating from fighting strictly crime, criminal matters to dealing with issues that were civil. You know, so when you when you vie away from your professional calling, they are bound to be mistakes. So what, what do you think will be, you know, the solution with the increasing rate of crime and uh, criminality in society? There is uh, the ratio of maybe one policeman to about 5,000, which Gross, is... Grossly which is inadequate. Very inadequate. Yeah. So what, what is your solution to that? Well, you, you, you see, there is no police force anywhere in the world. If you see any police manager anywhere in the world, the first two things they talk about you, inadequate budgetary allocations, lack of manpower. And when you are dealing with issues of internal security, it is a man-material mix. You know. So what you do is that you start winning the hearts and minds of the public. That is why the conceptualization of this community policing is good, but you know, they are having issues with, you know, it's implementation strategy because community policing as it were is not just a one if it's just one strategy from other strategies there's neighborhood watch policing there is a perspective policing there's problem oriented policing there is a what you call the other one uh, zero tolerance policing where you talk about things like the broken window when you have a small crime like drug abuse and all this type of thing. You deal with that one quick so that it doesn't metamorphose into kidnapping and robbery and all this type of thing. How do you deal with polit politicians mm. who engage the services of some of these thugs and uh, are said to be making a lot of money from then them? You, 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 you make an example out of them. Well, we've not, we don't have the capacity. We've not been able, because of you know, uh, political leanings and all this type of thing, We've not been able to really deal with that issue. And when you don't deal with that issue, a lot of them, when they procure those firearms for those uh, miscreants, they, sometimes they call them their constituents, sometimes they call them their, you know, after the elections, they move on. Did you find yourself ignoring a directive from the president while you were IG? Let me tell you, you know, in a democracy like this, it is not usually the president, it is his lieutenants. They are the ones. Even when the president says, no, you know what? I want a free and fair election. IG, I'm the chairman. Make sure that this thing is properly done. I've been through all this stuff before. I don't want to, you know, have a repeat performance. Uh, but, you know, 2 a.m. in the morning, you see some of his uh, ministers and uh, political associates coming to you to say, yes, we heard what the president said, but what, what is that supposed to mean? Uh, this is our regime. We must. So you take counter instructions. No, yeah, no, that is exactly what I'm saying. So you, you know, it is not left to you. And if you don't, if if you now, you know, uh, decline to dance to their this thing, then you go to the president and say, you know what, that guy is not, is not our supporter. He's, he's working for the opposition. I had instances like that. What Original. about remuneration of the police? Oh, abysma. Is the worst you can ever think about. What do you really recommend, you know, as remuneration for the police force? Is it just enlargement of the, you know, the, the staff strength of the police? Mm -hmm. Is that more important than the remuneration? Will that stop bribery and corruption? Of course, blocks? of course it will. Sure. It is not the money that you pay the policeman that is important. But there are some certain things that you put in place, you know, that would dissuade him from corruption. I'll give you some example. You move them away from me. From, I told you I was allergic to roadblocks. When we put the safer highways there, we said, okay, if you are going to put four operatives in that this thing to crisscross the Kaduna, this thing, you have about three vehicles from Zuba uh, moving towards Kaduna, three from Kaduna moving towards Zuba. Each of those vehicles should be foiled. Then the men on those vehicles, they are entitled to some lunch pack. That is what is obtainable all over the world. Then, if they die while fighting crime, can't you give their children scholarship? 
We incorporated the scholarship scheme. I went to the Corporate Affairs Commission and instituted the, uh, the scholarship scheme to say all of them that have died fighting crime, that I will make sure that then you come up with housing scheme. The thing that, that will agitate the mind of an average policeman who is going to retire is that when he retires, where is he going to stay? Where is he going to live? Pick a question. You pick the question and you answer the question. Okay. Yes. Great. <laughs> this, is a, this, is a very, this is a very interesting one. Is it? <clears throat> have you ever been Do you like it? Yes. Have you ever been offered a bribe not to chase a case anymore? How did you deal with the situation? Uh, fortunately for me, no. This has always come from, you know, politicians and the rest of them. You yeah, have never yes. been, you know, called by a politician to uh, kill a case. Uh, no, 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 no. They, they will, uh, they will not come to you directly to say they are offering you something to kill a case. But sometimes they put some subtle pressure uh, using uh, maybe. Uh, political party affiliations uh, pressure on you, you know, uh, this is our party, you don't have to embarrass us, you know, this, you do that and that. But it, it, the, the, the best thing is that your, your professional approach to it is, is to say, why can't you allow the matter to be investigated? If, you know, um, it is completed and we take it for DPP's legal advice. The DPP for such cases, it is usually the DPP that will offer an advice. So that way, you try to push this something to the DPP. You're a I, lawyer, aren't you? Yes, I am a lawyer. Yes, I, and, I, and, even, and even a political scientist. Yes, that was are you my looking first. forward to going into politics? Or? Uh, yes, I am not. Um, I'm not adverse to politics. The only thing that I'm scared of, uh, you know, sometimes when you watch political gladiators. They leave the issues. How are you going to provide good governance? Water, school, roads, security. I will want to hear discussions like that. I want to hear them talk about it. You know, what are your implementation strategies? What are the tasking goals? What are the timelines? But how, how come they keep manipulating the electorate every time there's an election? They, they make promises it's they can it's fulfill. Poverty. It's poverty. It's poverty, it's isn't poverty. it? It's poverty. You know, because sometimes you just watch these guys, uh, whatever they are, they induce them with, they are peanuts. And uh, once they, they are able to manipulate them after the elections, they move on. What are your thoughts about, you know, the Edo elections? Since uh, the crisis we had in the 60s, of uh, late 50s and 60s, with political uh, elections in Edo states, during the Owegbe crisis, I'm sure you must have read about mm. that. The... The people from Edo State, they are not prone to political violence. All these their talks they are just having now, that is, you know, what, how it will just won't come on the 19th of September. The elections will come and everybody will say, oh, to your tent, so Israel. That is the way the DNA of the Edo man, you know, is, uh, is configured. If you were still an IGO for this, yeah. would you not deploy men? to strategize, you know, towards the elections? By now, I expect that, you know, the, the, uh, the first management will have what you call political security intelligence about how, you know, the elections, will, you know, what are the challenges they are likely to have. And uh, as a proactive measure, if you, are, if you are able to identify those people who are likely to cause crisis, why not, you know, technically amputate them. At what stage of your life do you think of getting a partner for marriage? Oof. <laughs> that, that was a difficult decision for me because... Uh, she must well, have been. Yes, I, I was getting towards... Uh, too many books. Yes, I was getting to, towards, uh, <laughs> towards 30 and my dad came visiting me once. Then I, I think I was already a deputy superintendent of police. So he came visiting me in my station. And I took him out. I thought I wanted to impress him. We went for, for dinner. We had some drinks. We came back home. And then we got home. He said, hi, you have a very beautiful apartment here. You know, but you have something that is missing. You know, I said, yeah, what, what, what is missing? He said, I wanted to see my grandchildren, you know, running to welcome us as we were coming in. So I said, I'm looking for an ideal, you know, 
Say, you yourself, are you ideal? <laughs> <laughs> Say, there is no such thing as an ideal man or ideal woman. Right. But you can approximate your ideals, you know. So that was when I, you know, I made up my mind that, oh, yes, uh, it's time to I start having, you know, a family. He now told me that, you know, that I was ready, that, that there was nothing I was lacking. I already had a job. I, you know, I was making progress in my career. And uh, I've been out of the country to in the. But you needed somebody to steady the ship. Yes. And who was know. this? Uh, I ran into this young, pretty lady in, uh, <laughs> on. in the University of Benin who was a student. Really? And um, that was how it happened. Since the inception of the police, I've not known a woman to be an inspector general of police. Do you see that happening? Um, yes, it's, it's possible in the future that it will happen, but the only snag we have presently is that uh, the number of them who come in at uh, the officer cadet, that is the cadet ASP, they are, they are a bit few. And um, if we have Why more... Why is that so? Well, that, that, that is their entry point. Okay. Uh, and uh, now we've been able... The, I think the police regulation those biases, those tunnel views we have about female not being able to go for patrol, handling firearms, you know, they've uh, expunged them they, because they felt they were repugnant, you know, to... Uh, not because, I mean, there are senior yeah, police exactly. officers in, across the in world. The world you yes, know? like uh, the, the present uh, metropolitan... Uh, uh, commissioner, commissioner is, is a, a woman. woman. So we are we. It would it would be nice to have a woman, you know, do that. But also too, we we hope that um, our social cultural, you know, uh, biases will not you know slow it down. Let's take you on um, a castaway journey, right? And. Um, you may have to give us five items you take along on this castaway trip to an island. I will take uh, two good books. Yeah. I will go with a jotter. I will go. I will, I will need a pen. What would you do with the jotter? There are times when you 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 find that you are in your elements to write. Sometimes it could be very early hours of the morning. Sometimes it could be late in the this thing. And when those flashes they come, if you don't put them down at that time, you tend to lose the trend of argument. Uh, so I will need a jotter, I will need a pen, I will need, you know, some uh, books to read with. And I will need a phone if uh, I can reach out, you know. Okay. And uh, then I will have a small Bible, you know, that I can use to, you know, develop my spiritual strength when I want to. Your uh, wife? Yes. Works in the human rights organization. <laughs> When she raises arguments about all those rights, something I'll tell her, you know what? Here yeah, we are human rights compliance in this house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, just go to your office. But you know, it, it, she, she's been a very a great influence, you know, on me, um, especially my friends, you know, like uh, Buhari. What have you ever disagreed on? Uh, okay, there was a day. You know, she saw me talk on television to say, I, I kill any, if any policeman shoots anybody, I will, I will send you to jail. Then she said, no, you can't send the person to jail. You process the person through the decision. Eh? <laughs> See, that was it. That, you shouldn't have said so. You say you will dismiss them and you prosecute them and allow the judge to say that they will send them to jail, not yeah. that you will send them to jail. So sometimes she's my biggest critic. Yeah. Uh, we compliment ourselves. How sometimes. much do you like her? Oh, I love her. She is the one who has kept my my home peaceful, you know, <laughs> because thirty five years. Uh, Why wow, are you that kind of a guy? You know, you needed someone to. Yeah, I needed, you know, you see, when you are a policeman, you never have time for those kids. Who the you 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 need somebody who is knowledgeable enough to sit down and help them do their assignments. You are always out there you know, chasing uh, criminals or doing <laughs> your own thing. But you need somebody that will ask, ask the children to sit down. Where are your books? 
or we go visiting when they are supposed to visit their demo. I never had time for that through my most when those kids were growing up. Now you have the time. Yeah, but they are all they are all out of school and everybody, you know. They are, are you a grandfather? Uh, yes, I'm a grandfather. How many times? <laughs> Once. <laughs> I'm a grandfather, yes. Right. So I really appreciate that aspect that I did not leave the police force to come and meet my children, you know, not being able to actualize their dreams. Uh, in that one, they gave me a lot of joy. Wow. They, they went through school as early Give as... Give your wife a kiss. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Solomon Thank Arasi, you, for being Mario. on the program. Thank you. I've enjoyed the pleasure of your company. There's so <laughs> much you. You know, intelligence, you. information, <laughs> and that's how it's been on The Chat. I am Manny. See you again. The Chat is produced by Channels Television. You can watch it again online. Just visit our social media platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook.